Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of all signs for the full moon in Capricorn, the strawberry moon. Um, so what I'm going to do is pull some oracle first. Um, this is Sacred Traveler. Senior moment. Sacred Traveler, where we've been, where we are, where we're headed. Um, then I'm going to do a little bit of astrology about this lunation and then we'll do the tarot spread this is time stamped so you can go jump around as you wish okay so let's see what comes through from sacred traveler hmm here we go oh beautiful guys Okay, so where we've come from, Desert Passage, trust that there's a divine plan. So a lot of us have been energetically roaming the desert, um, really sort of keeping hope alive that we're going to come out on the other side and someplace familiar. Uh, where are we now? Gates of Triumph. Success expands in your life. This is perfect for the Capricorn full moon as Capricorn rules the 10th house of our career, our public persona, our ambitions, our achievements. So you can think of it that way, but take it as it resonates for you. It's like after wandering the desert, we don't just come through to somewhere familiar, we come through to somewhere new and improved. Now where are we headed? Rainbow blessings. Blessings are showering your life. I love that energy. Um, it feels kind of miraculous. And so many of the readings lately have been showing signs of, I don't want to say fatigue, but definitely signs of um, it shouldn't be this hard, right? Being in connection with someone shouldn't be a test of wills or a battle of like our endurance and stamina and strength. Um, and I'm getting a little emotional because I've seen it for all of you. And, um, you know, we sort of ride the waves, right? Lately, it feels like tsunami to desert. So I do hope you feel like you're pushing through something. You're, you're, you're following your path your path wherever it leads you and trusting there's a bigger plan and moving through this gates of triumph to some beautiful blessings feels completely appropriate so um i want to thank you for being here if you're brand new to the channel welcome um i've been telling everyone and i'm gonna do it here too that there have been some changes in the algorithms um, as a creator that's what they call us on youtube we get access to um, updates and I missed one about a month and a half ago um, and I started noticing in May a real drop off on my videos my readings being recommended so a little bit of investigation and it turns out that the new algorithm updates are pushing out newer channels and shorts that's their new focus which is fine because I was once new and boy could I have used a little help because it took me months and months and months to even get noticed on YouTube so I appreciate that but but then what it means is those of us who have been here making YouTube what it is um, we have to kind of do double duty to sort of get our videos out there so I'm asking go back and watch anything you might have missed <laughs> watch something twice if it spoke to you um you know like share the videos if you feel called to do so if that's an appropriate setting for you know if you are in a an appropriate setting to do so helps me show the platform that i'm still a produ productive creator so i'm asking for that i hope you don't mind that i took this point of privilege to do so moving on so let's talk about this full moon we are moving through the first of two i know hear that two full moons in capricorn so um because we have this one today uh tonight at 907 p.m eastern time so it will be the 22nd for those of you across the pond and down under um and then 
four weeks from now, we have another full moon in Capricorn. So I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but in the Cancer Mansion, because that's where the sun is, we're always in consideration of family, the fourth house of family, of our relationship with what nurtures and sustains us personally. Uh, how we practice self-care as adults in this world and all the ways that we are who we are because of the history that formed us. So it's about our ancestry as well, our roots, if you will. Cancer happens to be the memory of the zodiac. Each sign sort of has a role and a function and cancer is the memory. And so relationship with our literal family uh, is also where we understand that impact of ongoing family dynamics, right? So many of you are going like, oh my God, yes. I feel like I was brought here to disrupt that ancestral drama. Um, and things passed on generation after generation after generation is the memory. So um, cancer reflects all the ways that we carry the past with us into the future. If it's not appropriate, we have to find ways to cut chords with that past. Um, the opposite sign is, is Capricorn, where the full moon is. We understand that we have to let go of the past, leave home, venture out into the world, create our own sense of meaning, and generate all the structure that's needed through which we contribute to our public lives. So the fourth house of home and family, what goes on behind closed doors, it's a more internal water sign. Opposite of that, 10th house themes. Um, uh, uh, it's a cardinal signs, uh, both of them. So there's a lot of startup energy with both these signs, but 10th house, Capricorn, um, structures, uh, rules, public life, persona, ambitions. So fourth house, the mother, 10th house, the father. I'm just trying to connect the dots with you so you understand how this polarity exists in your natal chart. It, the houses that your Cancer and Capricorn fall in will show you those kinds of dynamics playing out wherever they are. So we have opportunities to address the same themes of this lunation um, four weeks from now. So this is sort of, um, and four weeks from now, the moon will be, the full moon will be at the last degree of Capricorn, which is called the mastery degree. You've heard me say that before. So we're starting out as newbies today. Like we're just kind of being born into this exploration. We come out on the other side with blessings and miracles and completion um, in a very profound way. So let me just get through my notes here. Two in a row of the same sign is just double opportunity to do some deep work around the same themes. Um, and so when these two lunar cycles are complete, it's almost like nothing will be the same, especially as it relates to home, hearth, family, and your private life. Fortunately, we are getting a lot of support from the personal planets. Venus and Mercury just have, they've been traveling together and they just moved into Cancer at approximately the same time um, this past week. So we have this beautiful alignment of conscious awareness, mind and heart, um, which is perfect. And um, all of that energy is focused on the home, the family and all the other Cancerian qualities. Mars is making a, Mars is in Taurus now, and it's making a lovely ge geometric connection to um, all the energy in Cancer. It's called a sextile. So what in essence we have is, um, we have the mental body, which is Mercury. We have the emotional body, which is Venus. We have the physical body, which is Mars. And we have the spiritual body in the sun and the moon, conscious awareness of the sun, unconscious awareness of the moon, um, all sort of working together. And that four body system is what makes up what we call the Merkaba, uh, the sacred integrated body that allows our soul to move through this life. And that is so beautiful. Um, when you think about it, it's very graceful. Um, so as for your full moon rituals, what we'd like you to focus on here is 
to put into your awareness what it is that you want to create or are actively working on in your life or in your relationship and then say the following and you can come back and jot this down i am now ready to release anything known and unknown conscious and unconscious that inhibits my ability to meet the demands of my life that's capricorn and the desires i have for more and the magnificent creations i am offering this world and so it is so in the full moon we release right we release we have gratitude for all that we have accomplished we release what's in our way of a of attaining the more um and so and it's okay this is one of those full moon sun dynamics where we're venturing out into the world please keep in mind that the archetype of the, the symbol for um capricorn is that sea goat that climbs the mountain and it looks like it defies gravity um, and i think it's one of the more spiritual signs uh, because that goat gets to the top of the mountain so that he can see higher and farther um, and, in, and and therefore gets the inspiration to see that there is more so i am sending you full moon blessings that those were my notes and um let's jump into a tarot reading shall we i am still feeling emotional what is happening <laughs> cancer sun i guess um and yes and for those of you who have heard me giving my little YouTube algorithm speech. You've been <laughs> so kind in the comments and so supportive. And so I want to thank those of you who had to sit through that however many times you've heard me say it. Um, I appreciate your patience, your support, your loyalty to the channel, your encouragement, your kindness is never lost on me. Here we go, guys. What is coming through for the full moon in Capricorn? For the beautiful souls that are here. Well, hello, Knight of Cups. Yes, a little romance maybe. What's crossing that? Um, death and rebirth. So this is the death card. So what we're looking at here is there's a challenge around growth, change, and transformation in your um, relationship, your connection. Uh, some things kind of have to fall off. Right? The death card isn't always about something ending. It's about some aspect, something that isn't working, something that isn't serving anymore, that needs to be released so that we can kind of be born again into the newness of what this connection is meant to be. And there's a challenge around that. So let's travel further in your unconscious awareness, eight of pentacles. So the moon part of your energy is all about, yeah, this is something I think we, we can work through. In the past, the sun, because we've been happy and we've felt so safe and protected in our vulnerability in this connection at points, and you kind of want that back in your conscious awareness, four of swords, attention to healing, to nurturing. The four of swords is a very, look at her. She's all cocooned up in that little nest, tethered to her heart. You know, she's got, a little tug on her heartstrings there so there is some healing here some awareness reflection in the near future the chariot yes the will to make progress to move forward to have triumph to come through this situation victoriously yes perfect so spirit's message to you three of cups is talking about some potential for reunion or a cause for celebration i see that tied to the chariot in the um hidden energy is the seven of cups sometimes the seven of cups comes through as like we're all over the place emotionally um a little confused maybe a lot of options and things to process on an emotional level so this is coming from your person perhaps a little confusion there but what i like for the outcome position the ten of wands talks about the big final release the letting go you've been journeying if you look at i love this deck light seers tarot if you look at the journey that this person has traveled with all this heavy baggage right and it's been slow it's been quite 
um, the desert journey. Yes, the desert passion, pa passion, passage. I'll take that mistake. The desert passion works for me too, right? So this is sort of where we've come from. And it's also where we land because tens are, are done. It's the release. It's the culmination. It's the full moon of it all. Um, so really unburdening yourself, possibly both of you, um, right? Finally feeling some lightness of being on offer. How lovely. So let's jump in with the clarifiers, Knight of Cups and the Death card. Queen of Swords, Six of Swords, King of Swords. Perfect. So remember how I said we have Mercury and Venus are together close enough to this, you know, to all the energy in, in the sign of Cancer um, to be really supportive during this lunation? Perfect right? You're a perfect match for each other. Queen of Swords, King of Swords, and smack in the middle. You're putting your heads together. How do we get beyond this difficult situation? What changes need to be made so we can kind of get, get the romance back on track? That's what I think I'm looking at here. Getting the romance back on track. Um, it's, you know, two heads are better than one. It is a process of some form of dialogue, some form of clear communication, no hidden agendas, so that's really important. Um, but it looks like the goal is to kind of get beyond something that's been bumpy or problematic or not working for one or the other or possibly both of you. Eight of Pentacles in the unconscious awareness. Yes. We can work it out, not giving up. Um, the Ten of Swords underneath is interesting because it's sort of like uh, almost feeling as if there was potentially a painful ending of something that's kind of coming back into view. So I know the Death card isn't always about endings, but it's endings and then a rebirth, right? Death and rebirth. And it feels like if there was something that you know, that was experienced that seemed to bring about something very final, um, that all hope is not lost here. There's a perseverance. There's a definite focus internally and unconsciously on um, putting in the effort to work on it, to persevere and work at it. This two of cups, the relationship is um, something that you haven't really given up on. So let's see in the past, we have the sun. Okay, so it looks to me like in the past, um, some form of um, an effort to sort of meet in the middle. I think there was maybe some confusion, some energy of I just need a little time, like I need to, I have to figure something out. Could be you, could be them, could be both of you. That hermit's just coming through as that time out, that sort of moment where we sort of retreat into ourselves to um, gain a little introspection, a little insight. Why am I so confused? What is this all about? What does it really mean? And then we emerge enlightened, right? We emerge to see, oh, yeah, maybe we just need to meet in the middle, find the common ground, um, you know, compromise, negotiate. Uh, it feels like the focus in the past was on a little bit of reconciliation at the very least, coming from a bit of a confusing time that you both sent, spent separately. Now we have the Four of Swords in your conscious awareness. Oh my gosh. God. Okay, so... <laughs> little bit of little bit of um worried energy or maybe just some anxiety and a little it's a little agitated the four of swords twice here with the nine of swords in the middle is um you have some form of conscious awareness about how how do i bring can we even heal this so there's your healing there's their healing and then there's the connection and it seems like this is something you're 
preoccupied on the healing part of it and even not just healing but like reflection really really taking the time to go inward to quiet the noise to get clear about things it's a it's a card of like review reassessment reevaluating recovering recuperating resting regenerating repairing it's all the reads that we normally see during retrograde season but that that energy continues on and look what's underneath the page of cups so the focus uh, sort of in an unconscious way is on sincerity, uh, messages from the heart and how those messages, whether the message of love, message of apology if needed, can bring so much healing. So it's not just meant for from one partner to the other, it is mutual. There is this focus that you have right now and if you don't have it, you might wanna consider like how do we find ourselves in back in the middle where we can say yeah i mean i just you know want you to know how much i care or yeah you know, maybe i misunderstood something so i apologize for that um you know whatever it is for you it's a general reading so it's going to be different for each one of you but it seems to me that you're focused on that shared energy of um, working something through and finding the healing through sincerity. Chariot in the near future. Oh my go goodness, guys. So worth the wait. Um, definitely. King of Cups, Temperance, and Judgment. Um, look at this. Three major arcana and the King of Cups coming in in the near future. This is a powerful shift. Like I said, you've been wandering the desert. We're reaching the gates of triumph. This is, the, the, the chariot is entering the gates of triumph through the portal even of solstice, right? This full moon right on the heels of solstice. The, the, oh, just so powerful. Okay, I'm getting lost. So what I want you to know is it looks like there's this energy of going with the flow. The return is already written. The triumph is already in progress. And there with the judgment card underneath is supporting that energy of reconciliation, reunion, second chances, working things out, forgiveness. Ugh, so beautiful. So let's see what spirit has to say with the three of cups. Yep, reconciliation, um, yeah, kind of going for broke here. It feels like some insights coming in, perhaps some internal epiphanies around this, you know, maybe evolving into a conventional committed relationship. It's probably what you wanted to begin with. And there's been some snags or bumps on the way, but now the opportunity comes in. And I feel like um, spirit saying, if that opportunity presents itself, don't hesitate, go for it, right? The fool, take that chance, take the leap for love. Seven of Cups in the unconscious, or in the hidden energies, I'm sorry. Okay. Now I get it. So, something happened. <laughs> like, that's a news flash. Um, and you're kind of processing it consciously. You're, you're in healing mode. You're in reflection mode. You might be a little worried about um, your person uh, reciprocating with some messages from the heart or some kind of sincere communication, Page of Cups. I do feel that something that felt very final now doesn't seem so final to you. Um, it was once upon a time, but the fact that the death card is the challenge here that's crossing our Knight of Cups, which is that card that comes in with all the emotional uh, vulnerability and maturity to bear. King of Cups is also about emotional maturity. The Cancer Capricorn dynamic, full moon and sun, is illuminating the need for emotional Cancerian maturity, Capricornian resolutions. 
And it looks to me like your person in the hidden energy is confused by something that blew up. And yet they still desire this connection. This is still something that they want, that they're passionate about it. But yeah, they're confused. They're probably processing, you know, all the fallout because there's the death card. So for them, the death card is underneath. And what that means is it's, it's internal. It's not something that's running the show. The King of Wands is running the show. The King of Wands is looking at, you know, whatever, whatever went bump, <laughs> wherever you got turned, twisted, um, is looking at it like, what, what just happened? What's, what's that about? And yet the death card underneath the deck is sort of internally they're registering, oh, yeah, we can't go through that again. That's, that presented too much instability. Something's got to change. It is a process of growth, of change, of transformation. The judgment card is Pluto, which is also the planet of transformation. So then you're, where you're headed um, through this experience, Ten of Wands... Ooh, yes. Surrendering to the fact that you are meant to be. You're meant to be. Yes. Leaving all the, the, the heaviness behind. Offloading the, the negative karma, the burden that you've been carrying. Having the will to push past it, to move forward. The wisdom to know. The, you, it's like the hanged man is Neptune. Receiving that enlightenment that says, yeah. This is our time. We're meant to be. It's, it's our destiny to be together. And so we kind of have to. There was a reading that I did. Um, I can't remember which sign, but uh, the message was let bygones be bygones. Um, <laughs> didn't get a lot of views, maybe the title, uh, but it's that's what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing here the path to this bright future, to, you know, the wisdom of the surrender to the connection that's meant to be is through just letting yourselves off the hook. Ten of Wands, man, let it go. Because something really beautiful is unfolding here and it's meant to unfold. The very last card, Wheel of Fortune, Fate and Destiny, Divine Timing. So cut yourselves, each cut yourself some, some slack um and you know let leave the past in the past and commit to um pursuing paths to some form something transformative where you each come through uh, better better people than you were on the on the front side you know before the aggravating circumstances as it were okay so really powerful full moon energies here i'm seeing it i'm feeling it um, i love the oracle supporting i love all the personal planets supporting us so i'm going to give you the astrology don't forget there is uh an extended to this where i go um every sign gets their own card and then i go back around and i clarify so what we're doing in that is letting you see for sun moon rising venus aries through pisces how this lunation may be impacting you so the link to that's below if you have any membership whether it's individual zodiac or all access pass you do not need to purchase just go to moments.com and log in go to your membership and scroll till you get to the full moon collection and it's right there for you i'm reminding you because sometimes you forget okay here we go knight of cups is pisces the death card is scorpio we have that twice queen of swords is libra king of swords is aquarius we have the sun is the sun um, that rules leo we have hermit is virgo the Page of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Chariot is here twice. That's Cancerian energy. So how perfect is that? King of Cups is Scorpio. Temperance, Sagittarian energy. Plu uh, judgment, as I said, is Pluto, um, which rules Scorpio. The Fool is the planet Uranus, right? 
If the opportunity presents itself unexpectedly, take it. That is um, rules Aquarius. Taurus, uh, the Hierophant is Taurus. We have the Tower is Mars, which rules Aries. King of Wands is Leo. Uh, Hangman is Neptune, which rules Pisces. And last but not least, Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter, which rules Sagittarius. That's what I have. Full moon blessings to all. Uh, I'm headed to the extended. If you don't have any memberships, there is a link below to this extended. Otherwise, I'll see you there. Bye for now.